Hello, I am Kimmy with On William Street, and we are here to help you become a more confident quilter, from the piecing to the quilting and everything in between. So this week, we are going to do a fun new free motion quilting motif. Don't forget, everything that we talk about in today's video, you can also find in a blog post on our website. So we'll go ahead and make sure that that is linked below. So you can see diagrams of the motifs, and step-by-step and step on how to quilt those out as well. And then also while you're there, don't forget to check out our shop where we have lots of fun modern quilting patterns, perfect for your next project. So the quilting motif that we're going to learn this week is one that's based on a grid system. So you need squares. You don't have to actually have squares in the quilt though, don't worry, you can you know sketch them out, draw them out, and then it's quilted in the squares. And it's similar to like an orange pill design where you can just stitch it all continuously. There's no stops, there's no breaks. So I'm gonna show you how to start from one corner and fill the whole space with this fun free motion quilting motif. So this design is a grid-based design. So I've got my grid marked out here. We're not going to actually stitch the grid, but it's gonna be there to help us um, with the design and to move around the quilt. So this design grid that I have squilted out is a two inch grid, but with this design, you could go very small. If you wanted a tight background fill, you could easily work off of a one inch grid. Or if you have like a charm pack quilt that has five inch squares sewn together, you could definitely use those and do a, a larger grid as well. So just whatever kind of size grid you want um, totally works. Now, if you aren't using like a charm pack quilt or a quilt that's got squares sewn together, um, you do need to mark out the grid first. And there's a couple ways you can do this. There are stencils out there, pounce pads you can use that mark it out very quickly and easily. You can grab a ruler and a fabric marking pen. Just make sure that you test them first. If you're doing this, I definitely recommend like a heat erase or a water erase, not the air erase because those are probably going to be gone before you get to them. Um, by the time you get the grid marked out, you don't want to have lines disappearing on you. Um, chalk also is an option for that as well. So some different ways that you can mark this grid out. And with this one, like I said, you do really need the grid to start. So I definitely start by marking that out. Another thing that we're gonna really go over with this is you don't stop and pick up this. We're gonna quilt this entire, not these because they're not full, but this entire section without um, picking up our, our needle, without having to break thread or backtrack or any of that. So it's a lot of fun, uh, really easy to kind of move throughout the whole project. And I love that I don't have to worry about stopping and starting at all. Now to stitch out this motif, we're gonna stop. We're going to start. We're gonna definitely start before we stop. We're gonna start in the top left corner. And we're going to make a hill shape, but it's going to be a steep hill on this side and a gradual hill on that side. So you can see how this one kind of goes straight up and then this one curves back in. Now from here, from this corner, without lifting our marker, our, our marker or our needle, we're going to go up and we're gonna make that same shape here. From here, we're gonna go back up this side and then down the side of this line. So now you can kind of see the full shape that we're going for here, kind of a fun leaf shape. From here, we're gonna go back along the bottom, up this, up this side, down this side. And we're gonna work our way to the end, to right here. We're gonna stop. Aside from this side over here, we're not going to stitch anything along the outside here, and we're not gonna stitch anything along the top here yet. We will get to those, but we don't want to yet because we want to be able to move through this whole grid. We're not gonna be stitching these ones, those ones aren't full. We're gonna to be able to move through all 12 squares without lifting our needle. So from here, we're gonna continue. And we're always doing a steep hill first and a gradual hill second. And we're actually gonna go all the way back along this line back over to this corner. Well, now you can see that we're back in this corner, the same one on this row, and we can do the same thing that we did here. All the way to this side. Again, we're not stitching this side at all yet, so we're gonna just copy and go right back over to the starting point and then one more row out. And 
It doesn't matter how big your row is, you can follow this same pattern, how big your grid is. You can follow the same pattern to fill in the whole grid. Now, we filled in all of these squares. These ones, like I said, we're not stitching those. Those are outside of our pattern. So we filled in all of our grids and now we're ready to go back into the outside. So from this corner, we're gonna just work our way up this side and then work our way across the top. And we get back to the starting point. And really, if you kind of follow this process where you don't do the outsides and you kind of fill in the inside, you can do any shape, any amount of grids you do. Even if you're missing some squares, you'll learn how to kind of work your way avoiding that outside back in. So I definitely recommend practicing this out, stitching this out. You can see this creates really fun movement and shapes. This real kind of whirly twirl across your quilt. Um, so, you know, try different shapes. Do some where you're missing a couple. Fill in the inside. And then you can come back over, go up the side, finish across the top, up the side and across. Try different motifs, try different paths. Get used to and comfortable stitching that out, all out as one. And it makes any of these kind of grid-based designs really easy to do at that point. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I've gone ahead and pulled my thread to the top. I'm gonna take a few stitches. And then I like to just get my threads out of the way. That way they're not gonna get sucked up into what I'm quilting and I can just kind of hold them back here out of the way. So first thing remember we're gonna do is we're gonna make our hill steep on one side, gradual on the other side. And we're gonna go from this corner to this corner. You can see I've got my grid and I just use school chalk. It doesn't have to be super precise. So it's okay that the lines are a little bit thicker. Um, and that's totally fine since we're just putting in that grid for spacing. All right, so from this one, remember I'm gonna go along this line here. And then back up and back down, avoiding the outside. Don't stitch anything on those outside top or right sides yet. And then just repeat. Go over, up, down, over, up, down, all the way to the end of the row. We're gonna stop here, not doing the outside line. We're going to move down and we're gonna work our way back just straight across this row. We're not gonna do any up downs right now. We're just gonna stitch back along this row. Now from here, we're gonna go down the side and then just repeat this same motif all the way down until we get to this bottom um, corner. Okay, so now that we've mimicked that same um, pattern all the way down to the bottom, we've got this side filled and this side filled and we're ready to go ahead and work our way up the side and across the top. And we 
are right back where we started without having to stop and break thread once. And then we have this fun flower whirly gig design completed all over. This is really one of my favorite designs. It creates so much texture in the quilt, so much movement in the quilt. So it's a great one to do either, like I said, as an all over design, if you have, you know, a lot of big squares, that makes it super easy because there's no marking or to use as a fill or just in different areas of the quilt. It's really one that I think you should practice and try and hopefully you love it as much as I do. So if you have any questions, um, everything that we talked about today is in the blog post. So I'm gonna have, you know, the stitching path and everything as well. So if you were kind of having a hard time catching that, check out the blog post. There's gonna be diagrams that will walk you through that stitching path so you don't miss anything. You can also check out our shop where we have tons of fun modern quilting patterns and projects that you can check out for your next project. And then don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And you can sign up for our email newsletter where you'll get notified whenever we post new videos and whenever we have sales or new products or new things that we wanna share with you, you'll make you won't miss any of that. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and we will see you next time.